Hello, uh, I'm Rob Barnes. Uh, I'm from Imperial, uh, a geologist, uh, mostly concentrating previously on uh, terrestrial examples, but now I'm, I've recently moved into looking at uh, Mars, mostly through the PROVIDE project, which is an EU-funded project with uh, these institutions here. And uh, there's a couple of other pr presentations from other PROVIDE members in this uh, talk today. So PROVIDE stands for uh, Planetary Robotics Vision Data Exploitation. That's a type out there. Um, and the aim is to simulate rover data and lander data from uh, previous missions to Mars and the Moon and place in a geospatial context quite similar to the uh, MER or the Analyst Handbook, as, uh, Notebook, sorry, as was presented earlier. But in this case, uh, there's a focus on stereo imagery and interpretation, so kind of exploiting the data, which is the E in the PROVIDE. So this is done through a database, a WebGIS, and a 3D viewer. So the role of Imperial in this is uh, to scientifically exploit the tools and data sets within the PROVIDE framework, test interfaces, uh, provide feedback to software developers uh, on the tools and annotation and so on, and how, how they can be improved, suggest additional tools, and also develop case studies um, to use, use these uh, tools. So this is just a screenshot of the ProGIS aspect. Uh, this is developed by, um, or it's being updated by Michaela Giordiano of Nottingham <coughs> University. Uh, this is the spatial entry point to the data. It's a web GIS and we can access rover data but based on a kind of footprint, um, looking at where it's facing and um, the type of sensor that's available. So this is a pan cam uh, imagery from the Merby um, Opportunity rover shown there. So that will go, Michaela will go into more detail about that next. And this is the 3D element of it. So uh, it's based on a fusion of different scales of uh, 3D data. We have um, a high rise stereo DEM underlying, underlying everything, and then that's overlain by a, a super resolution texture developed at uh, UCL, MSSL. And um, then this is overlain by uh, stereo imagery from the PANCAM instrument at the moment uh, from the Merby rover. Uh, this is still in development. It's a little bit noisy, but they're working on it at the moment. I'll show a couple of examples of that later on. So the intended geological applications of this 3D, uh, Pro 3D, which I'll concentrate on in this talk, is um, the high-resolution photorealistic uh, 3D rendering, which means we can see in a lot of detail what's going on in these uh, 3D models. Uh, we can also freely roam around the outcrops, uh, zoom in and out, which gives us a lot of viewpoints and a lot of perspectives to make interpretations. Uh, we can do detailed annotations and interpretations for communication of ideas. And we can take accurate measurements of distances, uh, dimensions of features, and ideally di well, dip and strike of uh, bedding contacts and fractures for uh, structural geometrical relationships and uh, determining paleotransport uh, di directions. So there's a few extra functionalities in development, but I'll just go into these ones in this talk. So commonly, uh, geological analysis is based around outcrop interpretations. Um, this gives us a nice uh, high resolution um, view into the geological evolution of an area. Um, Digital outcrop models, which are 3D point cloud surfaces, which uh, in Mar on Mars are derived from stereo imagery and they can be derived from uh, rover uh, LIDAR imagery on Earth. So these are being commonly or increasingly used mostly by petroleum and mining industries at the moment on Earth and techniques have greatly improved in the past few years. So now we can get this similar kind of imagery from Mars. Uh, we'd like to kind of apply similar techniques that are being used on terrestrial examples. And this Pro 3D is to be linked with uh, ProGIS so you can integrate all your observations. So the aims of this uh, research are to develop workflows, test application of those workflows using a terrestrial LiDAR example. Um, and then we'd like to apply these techniques to Martian 3D outcrop data and then I'll, in this presentation, I'll highlight the present capabilities of Pro3D and uh, if there's time, go into the additional tools which uh, we'd like to use for full exploitation of the data. So this is just uh, an overall workflow of a digital uh, outcrop model. 
and uh, the kind of data that goes in and the data we want to take out. So the primary feature is this uh, fixed and multiple location long baseline um, stereo imagery, which forms a, an ordered point cloud over which eventually we'll be draping uh, super resolution or higher resolution outcrop imagery, multi-spectral imagery, and uh, point analysis locations such as APXS and magnified images and Mali images from uh, rovers. And then we can uh, drape this onto a high-rise DM for full fusion of uh, these different uh, locations over a larger area where the coverage isn't full. And then the output, uh, we'd like to take sedimentary structure interpretations, looking at uh, bed laminae and set boundaries, looking for environments of deposition and the dominant transport directions which form those. And then from those, we'd like to take structural measurements and combine these with other observations, such as lithology and um, thickness of these units, to make sedimentary logs, uh, 3D surfaces, and so on, which gives us an eventual 3D geological model. So I just uh, most of the interpretations kind of divided into 2D first and then 3D after that uh, interpretations, so we can get a, a nice full view of what's going on. So the aim of the 2D interpretation is just to give an overview, so to measure the initial dimensions, divide or identify and divide the an outcrop into un separate units based on the colour of those units, the contacts between them cross-cutting relationships and the fasces or depositional environments that we can identify within those. And then we identify main and second order unit boundaries as well as internal sedimentary structures and we can measure the dimensions of these only in 2D for this and there's kind of apparent values. So the value of a 3D analysis is that we can take structural measurements of all these uh, boundaries that I had identified earlier and we again, can get transport directions from those, and we can get true values of thickness and so on uh, using the dips and strikes. We can also t get more detailed statistics on uh, geometrical features and dimensions of sedimentary bodies, and uh, again, this gives us a complete model at the end, or almost complete. So I'm just going to go through uh, a test example that we've been running on uh, terrestrial LIDAR data courtesy of... Uh, Liz Hayek, Hayek and Sheila Trampush from uh, Penn State University. This is based in uh, Utah in the USA. It's uh, an exposed Cretaceous delta setting, uh, quite proximal series of sandstones. And uh, there's the, a view of it there. So we have a lower layer of quite thinly bedded tabular layers. This is uh, there's quite an obvious contact between that and the upper kind of more massive layer. Then we start to get channelization developing which is eroding into the massive layer, and more prominent channelization in the upper layers, which is even more erosive, particularly to the right. So this is, I'll just show a, a quick line interpretation of this, which was used to kind of guide the 3D interpretation. So here we have the, the lower layer. This is interpreted as a marine unit due to um, intercalated shales within the sands. Uh, the, this unit, which is the more massive layered um, unit, is um, interpreted as a shore face or beach kind of setting, so we have shallowing upwards um, from the, the lower section. And then we have the channelization, which again represents uh, development of a subaerial environment and eventually moving up into this heavily incised, um, even more channelized unit at the top. Uh, we also have four sets that are dipping from left to right, um, and these kind of give us an idea of how point bars within the river are migrating and therefore flow is theoretically perpendicular to this. So in this case, into the page, but as it's a 2D view, that's not necessarily the case. So this is the 3D interpretation. It's uh, very similar but slightly improved because we can uh, rotate the model a bit and um, see how features translate across the topography of the surface. So we can also take dip and strike measurements, which I've highlighted here. Uh, we have um, the red lines, if you can see them, are the strike orientation, and the green lines indicate the direction magnitude of the dip. So there's just a closer view of that. Uh, we've just used surfaces which have a sufficiently decent topography to take three-point measurements, 
fit a plane through those and determine the direction of zero dip and the direction of maximum dip. And we can now extract these statistics for later analysis. This is all quite a new functionality, so I'll just show in initial results. I won't go into them in too much detail. Uh, come and ask me later if you want to know a bit, a bit more. But uh, generally, we can see this uh, black line is the approximate location of the orientation of the outcrop, so it's kind of north-south. And the dips and strikes that we're getting are generally um, oblique to the outcrop, so we can kind of see that uh, flow isn't going into or out of the plane of the outcrop. So the dimensions of the channels that we're seeing aren't necessarily true. So this is always something to bear in mind. If you took statistics of that, you'd get a lot of noise within it. And there's just another 3D view of the interpretation. The lines stick to the surface quite nicely. It's uh, quite simple to use. It's still being developed. So this uh, is eventually going to get tested on uh, Victoria Crater, which was uh, encountered by the Merby Opportunity Rover about a quarter of the way into its mission. It's a moderately degraded crater on the Meridian, Meridiani Planum region, uh, which has suffered about 100 to 150 metres of erosion or widening, which has exposed aeolian sulphate sandstones with quite spectacular um, cross bedding, which, we can, which has quite a lot of surface topography, which with the um, wide baseline stereo DTM, we can see the topography of those surfaces and measure the dip and strike of the laminations and then start to get ideas of the true uh, transport directions and true dimensions of these features, which gives us a nice idea on the conditions which formed these uh, outcrops. So this is just, uh, this is still quite in development. There's been a few issues with generating the surface and generating the shaders on the, the polyline tools, but uh, it's all coming together quite nicely. So next couple of months, it should be uh, much more improved. So I'll just briefly go into other tools that uh, we're proposing eventually. Um, we'd like to look at generating profiles along the surfaces. We'd like to put spatially referenced point data of other point analyses onto the outcrop so we can get an idea of how they relate to each other and how you can use those to build your interpretation. Um, we're also looking at things that are being used by the petroleum industry, such as perpendicular projection plane analysis and um, looking at attribute extraction from the point cloud data. I uh, would also like to project multispectral imagery for increased interpretation potential. So this is just a diagram of the perpendicular project projection plane analysis. Uh, it's just another way of um, identifying the true widths and uh, the, the identifying which channels, for example, are actually cut perpendicular to their transport direction. If you're interested, uh, ask me for more details or the paper by Van Lennon et al. Uh, I can send you that if you want to know more. So just to summarise the measurements, we want to look at the size and shape of the outcrop that we're looking at. We want to look at the thickness of the exposed rock. And we want to measure dips and strikes of bedding for structural geology, dips and strikes of cross bedding laminations for paleo transport directions uh, and locating the source of the um, sediments. And we also may look at measuring the dip and strike of fractures to understand the stress and strain history, and also directly measure grain size and grain size variations using detailed pan cam or mast cam uh, imagery or magnified imagery from um, for kind of finer grain sizes. So to summarize, um, Pro3D is aimed at quantitatively analyzing these digital outcrop models with application to Mars eventually. And uh, 3D data gives us a much uh, greater understanding of layer geometries, textures, and temporal relationships and the directions which were responsible for these features. And then regional integration is the aim eventually using combined Pro 3D and Pro GIS, which Michaela is going <coughs> to present. Um, so we can get a nice idea of uh, like field scale geological maps, basically, is the ideal result so we can understand surface processes on Mars. So, that's done. I mean, I've got a few other slides, but... Thank you.